Our series, We Stand Together, continues tonight. It's a time where community leaders have an opportunity to share their voice. Daryl Lockett is an executive director for the Kennedy King Memorial Initiative. He sat down with News 8's Katira Winfrey and explains why it will take a bold dialogue to repair the lives of individuals. More than 50 years ago, Indianapolis proved it had the ability to be a city of peace. We see it can still be that through countless peaceful protests, but we know there are also other sides to the city, rage and destruction. For lasting peace, the city may need to fully come together. The Kennedy King Memorial Initiative builds on the, the history and the legacy of, of one particular night in the story of Indianapolis, April 4th, 1968. That same night that Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee, Senator Bobby Kennedy was on the campaign trail for President of the United States. And he was here in Indianapolis, and it was there at 17th and Broadway where the landmark for Peace Memorial stands today. He delivered uh, the, the news to Indianapolis that unfortunately Martin Luther King had been taken from us. Um, and it was there that he first spoke of the death of his brother and how that grief had overcome him, but how we could turn that grief that we felt that moment into activism. That we could rally around a message of love, of peace, of understanding and compassion. And it's today that the Kennedy King Memorial Initiative builds upon that legacy uh, to really address issues of injustice and division here in Indianapolis and across this nation. And as to, as to how we can have you know, bold dialogues and courageous conversations to bring communities together to better understand one another, to realize that we have more in common than we do that we allow to separate us, and to ultimately you know, address some of those persistent issues that have divided us, uh, that have kept resources from traveling from one community to the next, um, or you know, provided roadblocks to understanding uh, to really bring us together and unite us as a city that we could be. Now, a common idea that I've heard in recent weeks compared to what happened um, the night Dr. King was assassinated was just the mood of the time, a lot more calm. Kennedy was able to help kind of keep that calm, and then you fast forward now, and we're seeing a whole different set of emotions. Um, talk about how um, you all are hopeful that that mood can translate into now. Well, I'm very cognizant, and I think we all need to be, um, be very aware that there needs to be space provided for the emotions, the pain, the hurt, uh, the agony and despair that people feel. Um, this is not coming just from a one incident. Um, this is uh, years and, and unfortunately generations in the making. The inequality and inequities that, that many people have found themselves living under, even here in Indianapolis, percolated to the surface. Uh, and that's what we're seeing. But I, I think it's really channeling that, that sort of emotion, um, that grief, that frustration, um, into constructive conversations, into dialogues that are bringing people together, that are truly addressing some of the social determinants of health, that are asking the tough questions as to why does one zip code determine their life expectancy in such a, um, a critical way here in this city that we all love. Asking questions as to why resources may exist in one community that have historically not been present in others. How can we then address some of those concerns with the same energy and effort that we're running to rebuild and redress the business community that's been um, challenged in downtown Indianapolis, how can we take that same energy to bring repair and redress to the lives of individuals who for generations have lived under certain inequities in Indianapolis that haven't provided the road, the road map or the, the infrastructure of opportunity that others have seen in this same city. So just to segue off of that, that's kind of the what's next part, definitely, would you say? Definitely. I, I think it's going to require a, a full community effort. Um, it's not something that's just um, at the table of police. It's not something that's just at the table of legislators and lawmakers, but it's community organizers. And, and that's integral to the story of April 4th, 1968. Senator Kennedy went on to Ohio and continued on this campaign trail for the Democratic nomination for president. But there were clergy leaders, there were uh, community activists, there were you know, just lay individuals who were passionate about um, keeping the peace here in Indianapolis and, and really rebuilding the city in a manner that was more equitable then in 1968. So today in 2020, we're gonna need all of those same individuals and more. Um, I'm happy to say that you know, the empathy that I've seen expressed at this time is unmatched um, at any other period of history, at least in my life. 
um, that I've seen communities of, of different ethnic ethnic backgrounds or communities of different um, religious traditions coming together, reaching across the aisle, reaching out to one another to say, hey, what can I do to bring about a change? What can I do to highlight some of the, the gross injustices that exist in our community today to ultimately bring the resources to the table, bring the hands to the table, and bring the hearts to the table uh, to make a, br a brighter tomorrow? You know, we could sit in a room and talk about you know this stuff all day but it's kind of it could be a challenge to learn to open your ears and actually hear what's being said is that something you all are kind of pushing for too definitely we're using the physical facility of the you know Kennedy King um, Park Center as a place to have these dialogues and these conversations the lived experiences of people are what we really need to tap into and understand that that you know what life is like on the east side may be starkly different than what life is like on the west side and what the challenges that one faces on the south side may be different than one on the north side when we really understand that it's not by anything that one individual has done but the circumstances and the environment that many of them have found themselves in that then we must address those sort of systemic issues um, with a, a strategic policy um, effort that really gets to the underlying root cause of some of the inequities that we face. So it's, it's listening, valuing, respecting, and understanding that the lived experiences of each individual matter. Um, it's, it's not you know, something that can be figured out in a vacuum of legislators. It's not something that the city council can you know, just innately know, but really hearing the stories, coupled with the pain, um, couple with the frustrations, but also right there with the hopes to understand, you know, how we're going to provide redress to these communities. Now, remember, you can also listen to our We Stand Together podcast anytime. And find tonight's episode and others online at allindianapodcastnetwork.com.